Hey, good morning once again, options traders, and happy Monday. I hope everybody had a phenomenal weekend. And I got a great question from one of our traders over the weekend talking about these sensationalized headlines that we've all seen. A certain stock has lost a billion dollars overnight or a trillion dollars over a short term. And he was asking, well, if that's true, where did all the money go? And it's a great question, but it shows that when traders ask things like this, that they're not understanding how stock valuations are even determined in the first place. It all has to do with marginal pricing. We've talked about this before in other videos with the marginal pairs. It's only four traders, four quotes on the board at any time that are really determining a stock's price. And once you understand marginal pricing, you'll see why it's a big misperception to think that the company lost this much money. So it can be a little bit of a tricky concept, as always, before we do, please be sure to click like, hit that subscribe button. It's greatly appreciated and helps so much to promote the channel. So here's what I'm talking about. Here's some older headlines, but check this one out. More than $7 trillion has been wiped out from the stock market this year. So this was back in 2022. And when people see this, they just panic and go, well, I better go to cash because the stocks are just falling to pieces. Well, yes, they can be intimidating. Here's one for a specific stock, one on Amazon. Amazon erases $210 billion in one day after inflation triggers surprise loss and ugly sell-off. So again, people would say, wow, something is really going on in the markets here. All of this money is just vanishing. I'd better get out. But before you do that, you have to understand that these are really misperceptions. So are these really done by the writers to create panic and get people to click on their links? Could be, but it could also just be that a lot of people believe that this is true, and it just isn't. It has to do with marginal pricing, that the value or what we perceive to be the total value per share is really determined by just a handful of people. So as an example, let's say that we have this rare work of art here. All right, maybe it's not so rare, but we're going to take it to auction and we think it's worth $10,000. But we get a bidder that bids highest of 9,000. Is it really fair to say that we lost $1,000? Or maybe we did have a bidder at 10,000 that decided to back out and now our next highest bidder is 9,000. Is it really fair to say that we lost it? Like we were just walking through the parking lot and just lost this money? No, it was just a subjective valuation that we no longer had. It's never lost. So this is really what's happening with stock prices. So for example, let's say that we have a stock trading for 100, and maybe there are 1 billion shares outstanding. Well, yes, it's true. If we multiply this stock price by the shares outstanding, we get what's called the market cap or market capitalization. So yes, it would be $100 billion. And that implies that if you wanted to buy this company, it would cost you $100 billion. But that's not really true. It's just a mathematical formula saying this is the market's subjective valuation of the company. So what's the difference there? Well, the reason it's different is that if everyone sells, the price isn't going to be 100. When you see that the stock price is 100, generally that's the last trade or the closing price. But even if it's during the day, you might say, well, what's the highest bid? But it's not for every single share outstanding. So for instance, let's say that as an extreme example, that the volume today is 100 shares. Now, yes, I know that would be a very light day considering there's a billion shares outstanding. It doesn't matter. Pick your number. It's just to make a point. But the volume is 100 shares. And for these 100 shares, the closing price was 99. Well, is it really fair to say that the company's value dropped a billion dollars? That they just lost a billion dollars because it was worth 100 times a billion, and now it's worth 99 times a billion? Well, the reason that's not correct is that it assumes that all shares are now worth 99. And it's not. It was just the last 100. In fact, in this example, the vast majority of the shareholders didn't sell. So it's actually a stronger argument to say that most people think it's worth more than 99. Otherwise, more people would have jumped in and sold. So this is why the marginal traders determine price. Now, the marginal 
Traders are just those right on the edge, the highest bid, the lowest offer. They're right at the margin. It's a term that we use in economics a lot. But you'll see it in stock market microstructures and things like that. They will call them the marginal traders or the marginal pairs. Those are the people that are really determining this price. And then we really unfairly multiply that by the shares outstanding and say that, therefore, all of the shares are worth that. Well, again, the vast majority of the traders didn't think that was true. Otherwise, they also would have sold. So let's look at a hypothetical level two system. So let's say that we have maybe the stock closed at 100. And now today, a little bit of bad news came out. So we have bids on one side. This is a level two. We'll look at this in a real platform in a moment. And here's the offer side. So remember how these are created. I've done this in previous videos, but let's say that we have somebody who's willing to bid $99 for 100 shares. That person's going to go to the top of the list. He's the highest bidder. The second highest is $98.95, just five cents lower. This person's willing to buy or bid for 200 shares. The next highest was $98.90 for 700 shares, and so on. So the computers will just list this. Again, this is called a level two system. And they will just list these numbers in descending order. For the markets, we're only concerned with who is willing to pay the most at that moment. Over here on the asking side or the offer side, we do the opposite. We want to know who's willing to sell for the least. So this trader here is willing to sell for $99.40 for 300 shares. This guy's willing to sell for $99.45, just a little bit more, for 700 shares, and so on. So we're going to higher prices up this way. And that's why most of these screens are structured this way, where we have the bids going down the screen over here on the left side, and the offer price is going up on the right. And that way, we can see the highest bid and the lowest offer right here in the center of the screen. So where is the action right here? Well. We know that the highest bid is 99, so that person gets shown on your broker's platform. We know that the lowest offer is 99.40. That also gets shown on your broker's platform. These two prices right here is what you're seeing on your broker's platform when it shows, here's the quote for the stock. Bid 99 offered at 99.40. And that's where they're coming from. So notice it doesn't mean that all shares could be sold at 99 or can be purchased for 99.40. In this example, it's just 100 shares that somebody's willing to buy for 99. On this side, it's only 300 shares that somebody is willing to sell for 99.40. Not every single share. So again, this is what you're seeing. This is called the inside quote on your broker's platform. So it's going to be the highest bid and the lowest offer, and that's what you're seeing. Now you'll also see, we'll look at it in just a moment, something called the size. It's a pair of numbers, and the first number corresponds to the bid, second number to the offer. So this first number, for most platforms, this is the number of round lots or 100 share lots for stock. So this would be 100 share lot or 100 shares. Somebody is bidding for at 99. Over here would mean 300 shares that somebody is willing to sell for 99.40. Now, Tasty Trade, which I've just recently gotten onto, actually shows the physical number, so they would show it as 100 by 300. But most platforms would just show that as 1 by 3. So this is what's called the limit order book. It's a continuous time dual auction. We have two auctions. We have bidders on one side, we have sellers on the other. And at any time, if we can match them, the computer will do so. But let's say that somebody else from the outside comes in and hits the bid, does a market order for 99. Computer says, okay, I can match you with this guy right here for 99. And so now we have 100 shares traded at 99. The stock closed at 100. Again, is it really fair to say that a billion dollars was lost? See, it's just the change in the valuation or the marginal valuation. So yes, two traders, a buyer, this buyer right here, and some other seller agreed to buy and sell at 99. But that doesn't mean that everybody could buy at 99 or everybody could sell at 99. And that's why it's absolutely incorrect to say that this money was lost. So notice this is quite different from, let's say, a bank that reports a bank robbery. 
and they say, oh yeah, we had a million dollars that was stolen. Well, yes, they are talking about physical dollars that are missing. And that's how people interpret these headlines. Well, where did it go then? Who's got this money? And it's not. It's just a perception. You could also say, I don't know, I think that stock, yeah, it used to be worth 100 yesterday. We now think it's worth 95, or at least that's where people are willing to buy and sell. But it doesn't mean that all shares lost that money. It's just the marginal traders. So let's jump over to the E-Trade platform. We'll take a look at the inside quote, the size, and level two. Okay, so now we're into the E-Trade platform, and I'm going to use Microsoft as an example. The markets are closed now, otherwise you would see these numbers changing very rapidly. But we can see over here it closed at 495.94, down $1.51. So Microsoft has about 7.5 billion shares outstanding. Is it really fair to say they lost about $11 billion in a day? Well, it just isn't. It's just the change in the valuation of the marginal traders. So take a look over here. There's our bid and our offer. These are the inside quotes. Somebody somewhere was willing to bid $495.51, and somebody was offering at $495.95. How many shares? 7.5 billion shares worth? No. Right there. There's your size, 10 by 2. So the 10 refers, remember, in 100 share lots, at least for most platforms, so it was 1,000 shares that somebody was willing to bid $495.51 and 200 shares that somebody was willing to sell at $495.95. So that's where those numbers are coming from. So again, if you wanted to buy $7.5 billion worth of shares, they just weren't available. So in this example, you could have somebody that comes in to buy 200 shares or even 100 shares and gets filled at $495.95, and if that's the last trade, that's what would show over here, and bang, the company just lost $11 billion. Well, that's not really true. It was just a change in the perceived values, and that's why it's absolutely wrong to say that the money was lost. Now, we can also see the level two system. Remember, over here is just the inside quote. That's the highest bid and the lowest offer. But if we go to the quote screen here, and scroll down. And here is the depth view, otherwise known as level two. And we have different exchanges. These are different codes for the exchanges. And look at the sizes. Again, the markets are closed now. Otherwise, these would all be populated with numbers. But as of the close on Friday, there's where the size of 10 was coming from, bidding $495.51. And here's where the offer was coming from, $495.95 for two or 200 shares. But let's say that somebody stepped in and wanted to sell 1,300 shares. Well, if there are no market makers to step in, that trader would get 1,000 of those shares filled at 495.51 and the remaining 300 shares at 495.30. That's called a multiple fill. Now, what if the person were selling 1,200 shares? He'd get 1,000 shares filled here at 495.51, 200 shares filled here at 495.30, and then this trader would show that 200 of the 300 were filled and that he now has 100 shares that he's bidding for at this price, 495.30. So once again, it's just to show that when you see that this drastic change in value occurs and the stock is down 5 or $6 and people go, how can that be? They lost so much money. They didn't. It could have just been 100 or 200 shares that were traded. And if those two traders had a, that big of a discrepancy in value, yes, we can multiply it by the shares outstanding and say that the company's total value dropped by that much, but it just isn't true. So always remember that the marginal traders determine price. That's just the price for the handful of shares that somebody's willing to buy or sell. And therefore, prices can come back just as quickly as they fell. All it's going to take is, let's say, 100 shares to go right back up to that price, and suddenly $11 billion reappears when it was really just the change in valuation on 100 shares. So the amount of missing money in the market cap really isn't missing. Yes, it's true. You could say that the market's valuation of the company fell. If we want to use that last trade as a collective opinion, 
of what we think the company is worth, uh, yes, you could say that that would be the total valuation, last trade times number of shares outstanding. But it's absolutely incorrect to say that the company lost that money. It was never lost. It's just a misperception or an abuse of the marginal traders and the marginal pricing that we use for a dual auction in a limit order book. So don't get swayed and panicked when you see these types of headlines and thinking that you have to run out and hedge your positions and do something because the company is losing so much money or so much valuation. That's why it's so important to have a goal and trade the market, but hedge your opinion. And the best way to do that is with options. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.